I think it's great. There are, there are people here that I haven't seen. I haven't seen uh, a lot of the folks out in the business. When you come back here for homecoming, everybody shows up. I spent five years uh, down here, and I uh, have a lot of fond memories of people and places down here, and this is just a lot of fun for me to come down. For the, uh, for the football, we came for the festivities, and there's a, there's a bunch of people from Radio TV that are getting back together this weekend, and we were looking forward to that, too. asked about whether to work in a large market first or a smaller market and if it's it's easy or hard to break into a large market and there are a couple different theories I have a couple different theories about that one is that you can start out in a smaller market as I did I went to work at a radio station in Ann Arbor Michigan and you can get all kinds of great experience translating that or and transferring that experience to a larger market is in some situations not transferable if if you're talking about a union City. I guess that's my lecture to you. Get as much experience in every area down here that you possibly can because for me that was the answer. I walked in there and I was asked whether or not I was an experienced cameraman and I said sure. Um, it wasn't true. That's why he's a lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> Most people come in and, and don't treat a, uh, a sales interview when they're applying for a job. They don't treat it the same way they would trying to sell a client on spots or anything else, and that's really how they should do with themselves as the problem. It's, it's worked best that way. And I got back, the first, about a week later, I got back seven envelopes with different TV scenes. I hold my In fact, I should have brought them with me. I have, I have close to 140 responses telling me there are no jobs out there. And I, about four months ago, I got one back. I just want you to realize there's a whole field out communications our business is in general communications, but there are a ton of SIU graduates in Chicago who are either part of or running corporate communications departments for Fortune 500 companies. The issue at hand probably for you now is to just explore that question between just now and the time out. you get out. And then, having explored that, you'll know what you want to do. Now, yeah. I, I think the best thing for anybody to do is go directly to your dream. My name's Lori Thompson. Uh, this is Dan Katz. He's a happening guy. He does have kind of a retro haircut, and that's one of the things we admire about him. Dan, what it is, what have you been doing lately since you became a distinguished alumni, not merely a student, working too many hours a day and missing too many classes here at SIU? I've been perfecting the retro haircut. You do it well. I'm speaking with Gail Simpson. Gail, when did you graduate? 1981. 1981, my God, you're old. Thanks. <laughs> what are you doing now? W-A-N-D Decatur. And what, what are you doing? I'm a reporter at Channel 4 in Nashville, Tennessee. I can tell. Can I call you Lori or can I call you Tony or what can I call you? I think you can call me anything you like, just don't call me late to the buffet table or the party. You never have been and you never will be. 10-4 from SIU Live, we're Katz and Thompson and you're fine. <laughs>
my brother is now a student down here. So we came to visit him. And our and, nephew is a student. And our there. nephew is a student and uh, we have a professor that was very instrumental in our getting together whose uh, name was Harlan Mendenhall who's retired from the university now and he still lives in Carbondale so we came to see him also. This is a great, great event. Uh, I remember when I first got here about two months ago, Randy and I were talking about a reunion. When the alumni office was going, going to ask how many people had registered to. So Randy and I started our expectations. You know, we said, well, we could for house, uh, gather around the coffee table, you know, get a bucket of fried chicken or something, and have a nice gathering. And then uh, about a month ago, lo and behold, about 50 of you came through with reservations, and then it was 60, and then 70, and 80, and 90. And tonight, we must have, what, 125, maybe 130 people here tonight, making it so far, far above any of our expectations. This evening, I'm as proud as anybody can be. And if I wake up from this dream of all of you people having returned for this reunion, of something that uh, I helped uh, starting in 1950. I'm going to burst with pride. It's going to be a terrible mess. But I thank all of you for having come to this reunion. It honors me as nothing else could do. And I thank you from the bottom of my heart. I managed to uh, leave my family behind and, uh, and become a uh, single college student for one more weekend. So that, uh, if nothing else, uh, I was young again. I'd be glad to reunion again. That's, that's a great idea. Sure.
comfortable this weekend. I can't recall the last time I had so much fun. I think it was the last weekend I was here.